This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We're spending the hour with Ronnie Castrols in Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, President Nelson Mandela lays in, lies in state in um, Pretoria at the Union buildings. Thousands upon thousands are waiting hour after hour to be able to pass by his open casket. That will go on until Friday. And then the funeral, the state funeral for Nelson Mandela is this weekend, along with his his burial in Kunu, where he was born. Ronnie Castro's leading anti-apartheid activist met Nelson Mandela in 1962 in the underground. Ronnie Castro's remained in the underground for a quarter of a century until 1989. Uh, he served on the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress for 20 years, went on to be a top military official under President Nelson Mandela, and then on to intelligence uh, minister under President Thabo Mbeki. Juan? Uh, well, Ronnie Castles, yes, we had uh, Amy had asked you a question before the break, but we'd like to, if you can answer that quickly. But we, in the few minutes that we have left, we also are very interested in your assessment of what has happened in South Africa since uh, the uh, uh, the end of apartheid, because you have been uh, highly critical of what the revolution did not accomplish, and you talked uh, in, a, in an article in the. Guardian uh, earlier this year about the Faustian bargain that you believe that the ANC, that you and the other uh, leaders of the ANC engaged in with the w with the uh, leaders of not only South African capital but the world uh, uh, the world capitalists and governments who were putting pressure on you at the time of the transition to a majority rule. So I'm wondering if you could answer briefly the uh, this issue of whether Nelson Mandela was a a, a uh, a, a leader of the Communist uh, a Party of South Africa, but also spend most of the time talking about your assessment of the problems uh, that still remain to be solved in South African society. Sure. Sure. Well, let me just deal with Amy's point. Sure. Communist Party suddenly makes that claim uh, a week or so ago. I was in the party from 1961. I was in the leadership at a very high level in the Central Committee for many years, uh, very close to Slovo and Mabida and others. None of them ever made that claim or statement that he had been a member other than that he had been close and that there had been some educational lessons in Marxism. Now, maybe he had been. It's possible, but there's no document to actually prove that conclusively. So for me, and it's not a question of wanting to cover up or be embarrassed whatsoever, it's that Mandela never acknowledged it, and because there's no real conclusive proof, I think it's got a rest in a sense there, because it doesn't really do very much. The fact is that if Mandela had a Marxist orientation, which he certainly did, I would say, for some time, that was dispelled when he emerges from prison 30 years or so later, where he in, immediately, in a major, his first uh, uh, address to our people, he commits himself to the socialist inclined freedom charter and the clause that is quite emphatic, although it doesn't use the word nationalization, but says that uh, what we committed to is the control of the hearts of the economy, the mines, the banks, the monopoly industry, and it's inconceivable that that will change. Right. Two years later, he shows a totally different view on the economy by going to Davos, 1992, July, very impressed, clearly, as he was in South Africa, by the voice of monopoly capital. Uh, I'm not saying he bows down to it, but he's certainly impressed in terms of what they're able to do, and comes back from Davos and says that for growth of the economy, we've got to look to the private sector. And he says that it's clear that if we go for radical socialist approach, he uses the term nationalization, we're not going to get the foreign investment from the capitalist world that we need to 
to make the country run and to overcome our poverty. So it's a total change. And this is where I say our Faustian pact or bargain stems from. Uh, it stems not just from Mandela, who is making this announcement and is following this through, but Joe Slovo, Ronnie Casrell, the left wing of the ANC, which was predominant, our whole Communist Party. There's no real debate or argument about this. Mandela really is the icon, which he shouldn't have been, for his fellow revolutionaries. He's a leader amongst other leaders. He's always about a collective, but Mandela is very firm on a course of approach once he's made up his mind. And I note that people like Joe and others actually go along with him. Now, the reason being that the political kingdom is coming close. And of course, this is a very big issue. We could have had a civil war at the time. Um, there, there could have been enormous bloodshed. There was tremendous threats from the third force, the, the uh, police, the soldiers operating uh, undercover and uh, with all sorts of right-wing elements from the Africana extremists. And uh, we were very concerned. Would we be able to move through that situation smoothly and get to a democratic election and form a government based on the people's will? Now, that's an enormous ad attraction. And that's where Mandela's greatness shows. But I would say at the same time, we, we push the economic issues onto that back burner and they success, successively become distant. So that nationalization, command of the hearts of the economy, this becomes a no-no. And once that sets in and you get the gates open for a nouveau um, comprador bourgeoisie to come to the fore, junior partners of big capital and the corporates and the international connections, then we embrace the neoliberal economy of the world today, with all its corruption, with its cronyism, uh, as it's Ronnie Castles, we just have about 30 seconds left. And you in the and, and then you're, you're in the clutches of what we all in the clutches of, the 1% the corporate world that runs the economy of, of this planet of ours and is doing so much harm to it and begins to undermine the political sovereignty and independence of nations. That's the point we're at. That's why we're facing such scandals and corruption with our political elite. Ronnie Cashels, we have to leave it there. We thank That's you for being with us, joining us from Johannesburg, South Africa, former uh, member of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress work with Nelson Mandela. I'm Amy Goodman. With I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global grassroots news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org today. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.